It was a beautiful summer evening when Sarah left work and walked to her car. She noticed a man sitting in a car across the street, staring at her intently. She brushed it off as a coincidence and drove home. As she pulled into her driveway, she saw the same car parked a few houses down. Sarah felt uneasy, but tried to ignore it. She went inside and locked the doors, feeling relieved to be in the safety of her own home. As she cooked dinner, she heard a noise outside. When she looked out the window, she saw the same man standing in her yard, staring at her. She screamed and called the police, but by the time they arrived, he was gone. Over the next few days, Sarah noticed the same car following her wherever she went. She tried to change her routine and avoid going out, but he was always there, watching her every move. She felt like a prisoner in her own home. One night, Sarah woke up to find the man standing at the foot of her bed, watching her sleep. She screamed and ran out of the house, but he was nowhere to be found. The police didn't take her seriously and told her it was probably just a nightmare. The stalking continued and Sarah became increasingly paranoid and frightened. She installed security cameras and bought pepper spray, but nothing seemed to deter him. One day, she received a package in the mail. Inside was a photo of herself taken from inside her bedroom with a note that said, I'm always watching you. Sarah couldn't take it anymore. She decided to leave town and move in with her parents until the stalker was caught. But as she was packing her bags, she heard a noise outside. She looked out the window and saw the man standing in her driveway holding a knife. Sarah screamed and ran to the door, but it was too late. The man broke in and attacked her. She fought back as best she could, but he was too strong. As she lay on the ground, bleeding and bruised, he whispered in her ear, I told you I was always watching you. Sarah never made it out of the house alive. Her stalker was never caught and the small town was left to wonder who would do such a thing. The only clue was a piece of paper found at the scene with the words I'm always watching you written in blood. There was a family who moved into a new house in a quiet, secluded town. The house was old and had a lot of character, but it had been empty for years and was in need of some serious repairs. Despite the real estate agent's warnings about strange occurrences in the house, the family decided to take a chance and move in. At first, everything seemed fine. The family began to make repairs and decorate the house to their liking. But as time went on, they began to notice strange things happening. Doors would open and close on their own, cold spots would suddenly appear, and they could hear strange noises in the middle of the night. One night, the family woke up to find their youngest daughter, Emily standing at the foot of their bed staring at them with empty eyes they tried to talk to her but she wouldn't respond they thought she was sleepwalking but when they tried to lead her back to her room she suddenly vanished into thin air from that moment on the family realized that their house was haunted they tried to leave but every time they packed their bags the doors would slam shut and the windows would lock they were trapped as the days went on the haunting intensified the family would wake up to find writing on the walls furniture moving on its own and ghostly apparitions wandering the halls they were terrified and didn't know what to do one night as the family huddled together in fear they heard a blood curdling scream coming from the basement they cautiously made their way down the creaky stairs and what they found was beyond their wildest nightmares in the corner of the room was a pile of rotting flesh and bones surrounded by a pool of dark congealed blood as they stumbled back in horror they heard a chilling voice whisper you should have never come here from that moment on the family was plagued by horrific visions and nightmares each more terrifying than the last they tried everything to escape but the haunting only grew stronger it was as if the house itself was alive and feeding on their fear in the end the family realized that the only way to escape the haunted house was to sacrifice one of their own. As the family argued and pleaded, the ghostly presence grew more and more impatient. Finally, in a moment of desperation, they decided to draw straws. The unlucky member of the family was dragged away, screaming and pleading for mercy as the rest of the family watched in terror. And then, as suddenly as it had begun, the haunting stopped. The family was free to leave, but the memory of what they had witnessed would haunt them forever. They left the house and never looked back, but the image of the rotting flesh and bones remained burned into their minds, a reminder of the horrors they had experienced. They warned others to never make the same mistake they did to never disturb the spirits that haunted the old, secluded house, for they knew that those who dared to enter would never leave alive. The darkness of the night enveloped the deserted street as Emma walked back to her apartment after a late shift at the office. She quickened her pace, the sound of her footsteps echoing in the silence. As she turned the corner she saw a figure in the distance, lurking in the shadows. She felt a chill run down her spine as the figure began to follow her. Emma tried to calm herself down, thinking it was just her imagination, but the figure continued to follow her, its footsteps getting closer and closer. She could feel her heart beating faster and faster as she broke into a run. The figure kept up with her, almost as if it was playing with her. Emma could hear its raspy breaths and the rustle of its clothes as it closed in on her. She reached her apartment complex and fumbled with her keys, trying to open the door as quickly as possible. 
As she finally got the door open, she breathed a sigh of relief and quickly locked it behind her. She turned around to face the hallway, and there it was at the figure she had been running from. It was a man, dressed in black, with a sinister smile on his face. Emma screamed and ran into her apartment, bolting the door shut behind her. But the man didn't stop there. He continued to knock on the door, trying to get in. Emma knew she had to call the police, but she couldn't find her phone. She was trapped alone, with a stalker trying to break into her apartment. As she cowered in fear, the man's knocking grew louder and more insistent. Emma felt her world closing in on her as the man's voice echoed through the door. Emma, I've been watching you for a long time. I know everything about you. You can't hide from me. Emma was trapped alone and helpless with a stalker outside her door. She didn't know what was going to happen next, but she knew one thing for sure her life would never be the same again. One of my neighbors called the cops after around 20 minutes the cops finally showed up and arrested the man and what they found on him was terrifying he had handcuffs in his pocket and a firearm on him only god knows what he was planning on doing to me and just happy it's over now has been charged with rape and sexual assault in the past. If you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe for more content like this. It was a dark and stormy night and Sarah was driving home from a late shift at work. She had taken this route dozens of times before and knew it like the back of her hand but something felt different tonight. The road signs seemed to be changing every time she passed them and Sarah couldn't shake the feeling of unease that was growing inside her. As she drove further the signs became more and more ominous. Dead end ahead red one followed by no way out and abandon all hope. Sarah tried to tell herself that it was just her imagination playing tricks on her but she couldn't help feeling like the signs were trying to warn her of something. Suddenly, Sarah saw a figure standing in the middle of the road. She slammed on the brakes, but it was too late. The figure was struck by the car and sent flying through the air. Shaken and in shock, Sarah got out of the car to check on the person, but as she approached the figure, she realized that something wasn't right. The person was covered in blood and had no face, only a gaping hole where their features should have been. Trembling with fear, Sarah ran back to her car and tried to drive away, but the road signs seemed to be closing in on her. They twisted and contorted into grotesque shapes, blocking her path and taunting her with their menacing messages. As the night wore on, Sarah became more and more disoriented. She couldn't tell if she was driving in circles or if the signs were leading her deeper into some kind of nightmare realm. And then, just when she thought she couldn't take it anymore, she saw a sign that filled her with dread. Welcome to the end, it read in bold, red letters. Sarah's heart raced as she realized that she had fallen into some kind of trap. The road signs had been leading her here all along, and now there was no way out. She tried to turn around, but the signs had closed in behind her, forming an impenetrable wall. In the end, Sarah was never seen again. Some say that the road signs swallowed her up, taking her to some dark, otherworldly realm where she is still lost and alone to this day. Others say that the signs were never really there at all, and that Sarah simply lost her mind on that fateful night. But one thing is certain, nobody who travels down that road ever comes back the same. It was a dark and stormy night, and Sarah was driving home from a late shift at work. The rain was coming down in sheets, making it almost impossible to see the road in front of her. Suddenly, her car hit a large puddle and started to swerve out of control. Sarah fought to regain control of the car, but it was too late. She crashed into a ditch and the car came to a stop. Shaken but unhurt, Sarah got out of the car and looked around. She was in the middle of nowhere, with no houses or buildings in sight. The rain was still pouring down, and she was soaked to the bone. She tried her cell phone, but there was no signal. Suddenly, she heard a sound coming from the woods. It was a low, guttural growl, and it was getting louder. Sarah's heart raced as she realized that she was not alone. She looked around for a weapon, but there was nothing to defend herself with. The growling turned into snarling, and then she saw it. A creature, unlike anything she had ever seen before, emerged from the trees. It was at least seven feet tall, with fur as black as the night. Its eyes glowed red, and its fangs were dripping with saliva. Sarah tried to run, but her legs wouldn't move. She was paralyzed with fear as the creature approached her, its hot breath on her face. She closed her eyes, hoping it was just a nightmare. When she opened them again, the creature was gone. She was alone in the rain, and her car was nowhere in sight. She tried to find her way back to the road, but she couldn't remember which direction she had come from. As she stumbled through the woods, she heard strange noises all around her. Voices whispered her name, branches snapped under unseen feet, and the rustling of leaves was always just behind her. Eventually, Sarah saw a light in the distance. She made her way towards it, hoping it was a house where she could find help. As she got closer, she realized that it was a cemetery. 
The gate was open and the light was coming from a mausoleum at the back. Sarah was too scared to turn back, so she went inside. The air was musty and cold and cobwebs hung from the ceiling. She heard footsteps behind her and turned around to see a figure in a hooded robe. Its face was hidden in shadow, but she could feel its cold eyes on her. Suddenly, the figure lunged at her and Sarah screamed. She woke up in her bed, drenched in sweat. It was all just a nightmare, but as she tried to calm herself down, she noticed something strange. There was a scratch on her arm, and it looked like it had come from something with sharp claws. As she examined it more closely, she heard a low growl coming from outside her window, and she knew that her nightmare was far. Sarah tried to shake off the feeling of dread that was creeping over her. She got out of bed and went to the window, hoping to see something that would ease her mind. But what she saw made her heart race even faster. There, outside her window, was the same creature she had seen in the woods. It was staring at her with its glowing red eyes, and she could see the steam of its hot breath on the glass. She stumbled backwards, trying to find something to defend herself with, but there was nothing in reach. The creature started to scratch at the window, trying to get in. Sarah could see its sharp claws gudging deep grooves in the glass, and she knew that it was only a matter of time before it broke through. She screamed for help, but she knew that no one would hear her. She was alone with this monster. Suddenly, the scratching stopped. Sarah cautiously approached the window, expecting to see the creature staring back at her. But instead, there was nothing. The creature had vanished into the night. For a moment, Sarah thought that she had escaped the nightmare. But then she heard a sound from downstairs. It was the creaking of a floorboard, followed by footsteps. Someone or something was in her house. Sarah realized that she had to escape. She ran to the door, but it wouldn't budge. She tried the windows, but they were all locked. She was trapped. As the footsteps got closer, Sarah felt her heart pounding in her chest. She knew that whatever was coming for her was not human. She could hear its ragged breath and the sound of its claws scraping against the wooden floor. The door burst open and Sarah saw the figure in the hooded robe. It was carrying a lantern and she could see its twisted, inhuman face in the flickering light. It was the same creature that had chased her through the woods and she knew that she was doomed. She tried to fight back but her blows were useless against the creature's thick fur. It threw her to the ground and she felt its claws digging into her skin. Sarah knew that this was the end. But just as she was about to lose consciousness there was a blinding flash of light. The creature howled in pain and Sarah felt it loosen its grip. She scrambled to her feet and saw that someone had come to her rescue. It was a group of hunters armed with guns and silver bullets. They had been tracking the creature for months and had finally cornered it in Sarah's house. The creature had killed her neighbors and was now after her. Sarah watched as the hunters finished off the creature, sending it back to the hellish dimension it had come from. She realized that she had narrowly escaped a fate worse than death and that she would never forget the terror that had haunted her that night. Once upon a time, in a small town, there was a young boy named Jeff. He was known to be a quiet and reserved child who kept to himself most of the time. However, something was off about Jeff. He had a dark aura around him and people always felt uneasy in his presence. They couldn't quite put their finger on it, but something was definitely not right about him. One day, Jeff was walking home from school when a group of bullies started harassing him. They taunted him, calling him names and pushing him around. Jeff tried to defend himself, but he was outnumbered and the bullies soon overpowered him. They beat him up badly, leaving him with a broken nose and bruises all over his body. After that incident, something inside Jeff snapped. He started experiencing terrifying nightmares and waking up in a cold sweat. He began hearing voices in his head urging him to do terrible things. Jeff became obsessed with knives and started carrying them everywhere he went. He even started talking to his reflection in the mirror and it seemed like someone else was talking back to him. One night, Jeff woke up in the middle of the night and found himself standing in front of his parents' bedroom with a knife in his hand. He couldn't control himself, and before he knew it, he had stabbed them both to death. Jeff then went on a killing spree, targeting anyone who had ever wronged him in the past. His victims were always found with a smile carved into their faces, which earned Jeff the nickname Jeff the Killer. 
He became a legend in the town and people were terrified of him. They locked their doors and windows at night hoping that Jeff would never come for them. But Jeff was always one step ahead of them. He was cunning and elusive and he enjoyed playing cat and mouse with his victims before he killed them. No one was safe from his wrath and the town lived in constant fear of him. Years went by and the legend of Jeff the Killer lived on. Some say that he still roams the streets at night searching for his next victim. Others say that he died long ago and that his spirit still haunts the town waiting to claim more souls. No one knows for sure what happened to Jeff but one thing is certain he was the most terrifying killer that the town had ever seen. In a small town in the middle of nowhere a group of kids were playing a game of hide and seek in the woods. The sun was setting and the shadows grew longer but the kids were having too much fun to notice. One of the kids, a young girl named Emily, was hiding behind a tree when she heard something rustling in the bushes nearby. She peeked around the tree and saw a tall, slender figure with long, spindly arms and no face staring back at her. Emily's heart raced as she tried to make sense of what she was seeing. Was it a man? A monster? She couldn't tell but she knew it was something she didn't want to be near. The figure, known as Slender Man, started to move towards her, its long arms out stretched. Emily screamed and ran as fast as she could but it was no use. Slender Man was faster and soon caught up to her. The next morning Emily's parents found her lifeless body in the woods. Her eyes were wide open and filled with terror as if she had seen something truly horrifying in her last moments. The town was in shock and rumors began to spread about Slender Man. Some said he was a vengeful spirit, seeking revenge on those who had wronged him. Others said he was an otherworldly being, sent to punish those who dared to enter his domain. But no matter what people believed, one thing was clear, Slender Man was real and he was out there waiting for his next victim. And as long as he remained in the shadows, nobody was safe.